If you like CGCs, you're going to really like this video, because at the end, I got some really key books I want to show. If you want to know what they are, just stick around and you'll find out. Go, go subscribe to We Love Comics. We love, and we do, we love comics. This video is sponsored by PGX Grading Services. Get one free pressing of your choice when you grade 10 with the code We Love Comics Free Press. Link in description. What is up, ladies and gentlemen, and all the comic book collectors around the world? My name is Chris, and this is my channel, We Love Comics. And it's been a little while since I was able to do a CGC haul. So I have six books that I would like to show you. And as always, I do mention the price. And uh, especially the last two are some pre pretty key issues. So hopefully you'll stick around to the end and be one of my power viewers. And if you are one of my power viewers, which means you watch a video till the end from the beginning, and if you're one of my ultra power viewers who watch from the beginning to end of all the videos that you see, make sure you leave that in the comment section and let those people be heard. And um, making sure you stay until the end because we always do today's surprise subscriber shout out. If you want one, all you have to do is be a subscriber. And if you ask for one, I'll bump you up on the list a little bit so it won't take too long. So, here we go. And also, don't forget, I do sell my um, my mystery comic boxes. If you go to the dashboard of my main page under the um, banner on the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see a little thing that you can click on. It'll take you right to my website. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. All right. So, these are all CGCs, which proves I don't hate CGC at all. I, as a matter of fact, I probably have at least 200 CGC comics. Here is number one, and this is Miss Marvel issue number 17, which is the second cameo of Mystique. Now, this was graded at a 7.5, and interestingly enough, CD, CGC does not mention here that this book is the second cameo appearance of Mystique. They just happen to mention she's in the book. So, um, for those of you who may not be familiar with this book, uh, Miss Marvel 16 is her first cameo appearance. This is the second cameo appearance. And then Miss Marvel 18 is the first full appearance of Mystique. So this came, this is a 7.5. I bought all these already graded, so I didn't send these out to get graded. So, not a bad book to have if you can add it to your collection. Oh, and I paid, with shipping and handling, $39.94. It would cost about... $35 with shipping and handling and all the grading fees just to get this graded. So uh, I can't complain about that price. Next up, this is a book I was talking about um, a, while, a little while ago. This is a book that people are speculating sometime in the future now that the X-Men have returned to the MCU. Um, probably won't be in Phase 4, probably Phase 5 or Phase 5, ugh, Phase 5, fo fum, Phase 6 where they have the Avengers versus the X-Men, because they have to establish the characters before they do something like this. But people have been speculating that eventually they might get the Avengers versus X-Men crossover. So these are books to get cheap. Uh, this is Avengers versus X-Men number one. This is the uh, launch party variant. Its partial cover is color, and part of the cover is black and white. So this is one of the rare ones. Uh, this is a 9.6. I do have a, um, I forget, it's a Hasbro toy variant of this, which is a 9.8, but um, I bought that years ago. I don't know offhand what I paid for it, but this one, I paid a grand total of $47. So definitely a book to get, if you can get it, any of the Avengers vs. X-Men, because they might do it eventually, but obviously there are no guarantees, so keep that in mind. All right, the next one I got two of, because I bought them both at the same time. Um, this is the unknown comics book, comic book variant. This is the Virgin cover of Spider Gwen Ghost Spider number one. Uh, these both came back at 9.8. Actually, so this way you could see. So both of them are 9.8. These are the Virgin variants, the unknown comics edition. Um, eventually, you're going to see more of the female characters coming along in the MCU. Um, Spider-Gwen is one of the ones that I really like, so I would definitely look forward to her being in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Obviously, she was in the Sony, uh, you know, kind of cartoonish slash computer graphic one when that was a pretty good movie. But uh, we haven't seen her live action. I would be very interested in that book, um, in that character. So, love that character. Uh, paid $89.99 a piece, and that, of course, includes shipping and handling. 
could be something that has some kind of potential later on, especially when it's in higher grade. All right, next one I talked about a little while ago, and I've been saying for years this is a comic book character to get. I already own several copies, including a 9.8, but I managed to get a second, well, no, second grade. But this is only a 6.5, but for the money I paid, I'm not going to complain. This is She-Hulk number one. This is the first appearance of the She-Hulk. A lot of rumors and speculations about her. I really would love to see her as a character. Whether it happens or not remains to be seen. But like I always tell people, if you're going to do this for investment purposes, and you don't have to, obviously, if you do it because you just love it, that's perfectly fine. But if you're doing it for investment purposes, and if you look at my videos, most people like the speculation videos more than anything else I do. So it shows most people are interested in that. Always better to get these cheaper. Now, this one I just added recently, but like I said, I have several copies of this book. I think I paid $140 or something like that, $128 for my CGC 9.8. Paid $77.05 for this book. So, again, it's one of those now it's getting a little hotter due to the speculations. We'll see what happens. But if she ends up in a movie, you definitely want to get that book. All right, the last two are mega key issues. This one I've shown. This is now my third copy of this book. Now, this is funny. This was on my 2015 wish list. It was either 2015, no, actually 2016 wish list. And... I have seen auction after auction, and it was just way too expensive for the low grades that they wanted for this book. Because this book is really hard to get in high grade because of the purple shows every little nook and cranny. So it took me years of missing out on um, opportunities to get this book. And then I got one last month. Then I got another one two days later, ungraded. And now this is my third copy this year in the past 30 days. So I couldn't get it for years, and I was trying, trust me. There were many auctions where I set a limit of what I'm going to spend, and I would lose out, which I'm fine with because I'm not going to overspend to get a book. But now this is the third one in a less, than a, a, less than about a month. This one's the lowest of the three. The other graded one I got is a 2.5. So this is a 2.0 with off-white pages, uh, cover reattached with tape, tape on the interior cover. I'm perfectly fine with that because this is a lower grade. But uh, this is the first appearance and origin of Brainiac. Always wanted this cover. I love this comic. Um, if they ever do Brainiac in a DC movie, uh, this book is going to go crazy. So um, they've already done them in a TV show, but there's a big difference between a TV show and a movie. So um, this is definitely a book to get if you can get it. Definitely not a cheap book, but I think I paid pretty decent considering I paid $670, which includes shipping and handling. So now I'm the proud owner of three of those books. And people, there are people, especially newer people, that might say, well, why do you get more than one copy? The reason I always tell people this, I highly recommend that if you can get it, because if you ever have to sell one or if you want to trade a couple of your extras to be able to get something else, and my cat is definitely looking to be part of the show, um, you can end up trading like, if I have three copies, if I trade two of them to get a comic I've never had and upgrade, well, I still have the original comic. So it pays to be able to get multiples, if you can, of any book, so you have a little bit more wiggle room and still own the original comic. And that's why, even with my mystery boxes, um, I'm only selling my duplicates. So this way, if I have five of a copy, five copies of something, and I put four of them in some of the Marvel boxes, the comic boxes I'm doing... Well, I still have the original book. So that, to me, is the reason why. All right, so this is the last book. This is the keyest of them all. It is a book I have several copies of. Again, I told you the reason why. My cat is very interested in seeing what it is. And uh, this one is one I highly recommend getting because it's not a matter of if. It's just a matter of when. And here is my either fourth or fifth copy of Amazing Spider-Man issue number 14 which, of course, is the first appearance of the Green Goblin. This has off-white pages and definitely a key book to get. Um, I cannot stress enough, this is a book that if you can add even in lower grade, I would highly recommend it because it's just a matter of time before the Green Goblin ends up in a Spider-Man film. It may not be the next one. Who knows? I have a feeling at the end of Far From Home, you might get an end credit scene. Because uh, people are, are speculating that the old Iron Man building 
is going to be um, the new home for Norman Osborn. I actually thought it would be for the Fantastic Four. Either one, you can't go wrong. But you might see an end credit scene, not of the Green Goblin, but at least of the character that plays the Green Goblin, which is Norman Osborn, and then it'll go from there. Um, what, whether they do that or not remains to be seen, but definitely a book to acquire if you can get. Now, I was able to get this a little bit cheaper than what it's worth because of the fact that right here there is a crack. Now, I did check it. It's not something that's cracked so far that you could peel something out. It just, I guess, with the case itself, it just happened to crack a little bit. The one thing I've learned with the CGC cases, if you compact too many of them in a... Um, in a box and they press against each other this can happen because my x-men number one right on the bottom it cracked a little bit because of that so these cases i love them but they're not as durable as some of the other companies and i'm sure other people can testify to that if they've had several of them kind of pushed together i mean i've had other graded comics do the same thing and they stand up so it's just something that uh you can get re-slabbed, which is probably something I will do eventually. But uh, because of that little crack, and they did mention it in the auction, so I knew about it, so I didn't have a problem with it. I paid $763.70. Uh, 3.0 is roughly around a twelve dollars to $1,400 book, and that's before you see um, Green Goblin in a movie. Now, obviously, Green Goblin was in the original Spider-Man but you're talking over a decade ago at this point, and now we're talking about the MCU. It's going to definitely be a different situation, and it is going to see a value increase if and when it does happen. I'm not going to guarantee it, but they would be silly not to use Spider-Man's basically number one, if not number two villain of all time. I mean, most people might say it's it's Venom, but I mean, when you're talking historical from the beginnings... The Green Goblin was probably, in my opinion, the number one villain of all time. So it's just a matter of if, not if, but when. So those are the books. We got Amazing Spider-Man 14, 3.0, Off-White Pages. We got Action Comics 242, 2.0, Off-White Pages. We got She-Hulk number one, 6.5, White Pages. Two of the Spider-Gwen Ghost Spider variant version covers, both 9.8 White Pages. We have the partial black and white launch party variant of X Avengers vs. X-Men number 1, 9.6. And last but not least, Miss Marvel number 1, CGC 7.5, off-white to white pages. And those are the books. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you appreciated this video. If you do, thumbs up are always appreciated. And uh, make sure you wait until the end to see who's today's surprise subscriber shout-out. Give my mystery boxes a try. And uh, leave a comment at the end of this video. So thanks for watching. Don't forget, it's not you, it is not I, it's We Love Comics. Thank you for watching my video. If you would like to sign up for the cashback program and get $10 back if you spend $25 or more within the first 90 days, just click on this link right here. If you're interested in any of my Marvel mystery boxes, you can click this link and just go all the way to the bottom and you can order right there. If you'd like to join my Patreon account, it's right here. Facebook is right here, and mycomicshop.com if you'd like to order some comics from their store. Now, on to the surprise subscriber shout-out.